The, the, the key there was that the, the four of us, two Democrats and two Republicans, uh, came together uh, around the issue of conservation and really in particular international conservation. And so what we were trying to do, there was a big void. And we realized if Democrats and Republicans came together in a bipartisan way, we could fill the void, start signing up senators and, and representatives and move forward with a caucus that was going to speak up for international conservation. I mean, one of the things we knew, international conservation wasn't really on the agenda. People weren't talking about it. The United States was doing a few things, but the important thing here was, was filling a void that, that uh, just uh, hadn't been dealt with for a really long time. The caucus itself is uh, pro-development, pro-jobs, pro-conservation. And so we want to see developing societies do well. And so one of the keys here is making sure that the work we do is, is impacting across the world and you, and you lift everybody. And if you have good natural resource development, uh, you're going to impact all societies, whether they're rich or poor or somewhere in between. And so that's the kind of thing we want to see. And you, ne you never forget in this business that ecosystems cross borders. You, you have to make sure that people understand that and that countries work with each other. And so an important role of the International Conservation Caucus is really to make sure the countries work with each other on their ecosystems and the, and the protection of their ecosystems. And that, in turn, helps build vital societies. We first of all learned here in the United States that if we work together in our Congress, we would, and Republicans and Democrats, we'd be able to get a lot more done. If we work together, we'd be able to get a lot more done. Then we realized at the international level, we didn't want to just be talking to governments. We wanted to be talking to their parliamentary bodies. And so if you have a multi-party situation where you set up essentially an international conservation caucus within a country, then they can talk to the government much better than we can. And, and what we've seen is by growing that, the local uh, the, the local NGOs, the local infrastructure for conservation, all of that's grown as a result of plugging into multi-party um, caucuses. Well, the, the, the real key here is public-private partnerships. I mean, what we want to see is the public sector, which it probably has programs that concern uh, conservation, ecosystem protection, biodiversity protection, those kinds of things, reaching out to the private sector. The private sector, uh, when asked, will help in a big way. And so that public-private partnership is tremendously important when it comes to international conservation. I, I think we've had some real successes in terms of the Stamp Act. We've had uh, uh, success in the partnership there in the Congo Basin. I, at this point, you know, we're working all over the world. The exciting thing is with these multi-party caucuses in 11 different countries, uh, we're having an impact around the world. And then others are stepping in and saying to these same groups, come and help us in our country set up a, a conservation caucus. Show us how to do it. And, and so I think it's spreading. Originally, you know, the United States had these great conservation ideas. They had the national park idea, the wilderness idea. And then you take those internationally to really uh, make a difference. And that's, that's something pretty special. And then when other countries realize that they can do that and they buy into it, they also spread the word. So then it just isn't on us. They're doing uh, a big chunk of the work. The, the foundation really makes a difference because it can move in in a way and fund things that we aren't able to fund and that we aren't able to do as a caucus. And so they can help bring people together. They can have forums uh, that uh, everybody feels comfortable coming together and speaking out. Uh, they, they are able to put in the field members of Congress who've never seen some of these really precious ecosystems. And so that's something pretty exciting to move our agenda forward. And so the foundation 
uh, is one of the keys to the successes that uh, we're making here. I, I don't have any doubt that, that international conservation helps us on international security because it helps us grow communities, make them stronger, and then people don't feel like they are living in a society uh, where they're threatened and they have to strike out. And you're trying to build states up rather than have a stateless situation or a rogue state. You have a stronger uh, country basis to move forward with. Um, and, and that's really important in the international conservation area to realize the things we may be targeting have far more reach than just what we're, uh, uh, what we're working on. Congress should make a priority of international conservation and one of the issues is to, to reach out and both sides have meetings and figure out where we have the common ground. We've done so much so quickly and so far, uh, what we need to do is try to figure out where that common ground is going to be. But the, but the key core issue uh, is to realize that, that uh, you know, we, we don't inherit the earth from our fathers. Uh, we borrow it from our children. And we need to take that principle and put it uh, into action in terms of determining the next agenda. So I, I'd like to see us do things on climate change. I'd like to uh, see us do things in the area of biodiversity. Uh, I'd also like to see us really move forward with, with more parks and park enforcement and those kinds of things. But the first thing is to reach out to our Republican friends and try to make sure uh, that they're on board. I mean, they, they're uh, going to be in charge in this next Congress. We want to make sure we work with them so that uh, we can find things that we share and we move forward.